Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School lesson from First United Methodist Church. I encourage you to get your Sunday School book if you've got one, to get your Bible, certainly. And if you want to put pause and hit pause and get you a cup of coffee, that's perfectly all right, too. This morning, our lesson comes from a particular psalm, the entire Psalm 8. And the title of the lesson is God and Human Beings. And the purpose of our lesson is to explore what it means to be made in God's image. But before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning. Some of us are already busy with Christmas and the running around and that decorations and all of that. But Lord, this is the second week of Advent. Help us to take time to reflect on the birth of Christ, to think about those instances that happened 2,000 years ago that brought us to a point where we can claim Jesus as our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for this, for this psalm that we're gonna study today and what it means. Help us to open our hearts and accept it to hear your word, to hear your spoken word. It is in Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. Well, as I said earlier, the title of the lesson is today is God and Human Beings. And we're going to read today from a particular psalm. And uh, it's, it is, I feel like a little bit like an English teacher this morning, but it's, it's a sacred poetry that was meant to be sung as, all, as most all hymns were. This hymn was given to the music director at the, by David early in David's king, kingship. Uh, we, we'll get here and we listen to what we have, what David has to say about, about the earth and, and, and our, our God. The Bible offers, offers us a high view of what it means to be a human being, and this is no better place to start that discussion than in Psalms 1 through 8. When we get through, we'll come back and uh, we'll come back to it and kind of go through it verse by verse. Psalms 8, 1 through 9. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. From the mouths of nursing babes, you have laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moons and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you would think about them? What are human beings that you would pay attention to them? You've made them made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet, all sheep, all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. And the key verse is, what are human beings that you think about them? What are, you, what are the human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. Uh, grandeur. This, this verse, this psalm starts and ends with the same line. And so what's, that kind of sets the tone for Psalms 8. And then what's in the middle is the crux of it. So when you think about being human, have you ever said, I'm only human? That's a pretty natural response in it. Uh, there's a comic strip called Arlo and Janice that talked, had a particular strip about their son, Gene, and he was... Uh, 
had done something wrong and his parents were confronting him about it. And he, Gene protested and said, I'm only human. And Arlo, the father, responds to say, that's no excuse, son. And Gene says, it isn't. I thought I'd found a loophole. Don't we feel that way sometimes? I'm only human. You shouldn't expect much of me. Wow. Well, let's see what God thinks of us when we examine this a little closer. So we said earlier that this was a, a psalm of praise, and it is the first psalm of praise that we find in the book of Psalms, and it is the only psalm that goes directly to God, that goes straight to worshiping him and it, and he, when he says, when the, when the psalmist says, Lord, our Lord, the first Lord is in all caps, all capital letters. And that means the same thing as Yahweh. So when you read in your Bible, Lord, and it's L-O-R-D, all in caps, think Yahweh. And then the second Lord, our Lord, is in lowercase letters. The first letter is capitalized and then the rest of them are in lowercase. That means sovereign. So when you think about the right way to say this then would be Yahweh our sovereign or Yahweh our king, our majesty. See the difference? Lord of lords, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than the heavens. That's not God's heaven. That's higher than the skies. That's the next verses give me some cause to ponder and think about what his intentions were when he wrote that. And I might even have to, have to get a little help from the teacher's guide in explaining it. From the mouths of nursing babes, you have laid a strong foundation because of your foes. Now that's kind of confusing to me. Is it to you? Well, let's see how the how the uh, this the person who writes who wrote the student uh, the uh, teacher's guide understand it. How he translates it. There is some lack of clarity in the original Hebrew, he says. Some translations associate the mouths of nursing babes with a bulwark. But I want to give you, well, I'm going to find Matthew 21.16. So give me just a second while I find it in my Bible. Matthew 21, verse 16. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. That's Jesus referring back to Psalm 8. So what he is trying to, what David was trying to say was that even the babies when they babble are praising God. Let's think about it that way. And that even them, Jesus realized that that they could, the children could recognize heavenly things, majestic things. Let's let's think when we we talked last week about about the natural theology and the idea that you can look around and see God and see God at work. Let's look at it again in in verse. Uh, in, in verses uh, three through six, 
When I look up at your skies, at what you made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? Does, this, does those lines maybe make you think a little bit about Job and how he felt when he lost everything? And he was angry at God and he called out to God, what are you doing punishing me this way? Why are you, why are you even paying attention to me? What am I to you? He was trying to understand his role in creation. So what is our role in creation? Well, I think there's some, there's some very good analogies that we could draw here. He made us just a little lower than the, than the angels. And he made us to take care of creation. We read that. So how do you feel about what you're doing to take care of creation? My dad was a, a, a logger for 30 years in his life. And he very seldom would he clear cut a piece of property. Have you ever walked in among a clear cut piece of property to see what it looks like? It doesn't look good. It, it looks like d destruction. And that was why he didn't like to cut timber like that. But on the other hand, this spring, I had a piece of timber that the tornado destroyed. Oh, looks very similar. So, I, what is our role in creation? Well, how do you think God feels about what we've done to the rainforest? Hmm. What do you think he thinks about the mountains in West Virginia that we've just destroyed, took down to extract coal? I, I don't have an answer to those questions. I just throw them out there for you. Uh, but let's think about it. He has given us control over everything on earth. And so we must then, in retrospect, think, well, what are we doing with it? One of the questions in the student book was, what do you long to hear God say about you, you the individual? Take a moment and think about that. The first word that comes to my mind is welcome. <laughs> I dare not think that he will tell me well done, although I strive for that. I'm only human. Remember that? All right, so let's think, let's look at the next question. Do you ever ask God to help you see his image in someone that you might not like? Oh, wait, I thought this was about me. Now you're asking me to care about somebody that I don't like. Oh, can you see God in somebody you don't like? That's a pretty tall order. That's a pretty tall order. It's hard, but it's our job. It's what we were put here for. Wow. When we think about we're made in God's image, let's consider four different concepts. <clears throat> What do you think about your physical resemblance to God? Hmm. Do you think you really look like God? Probably not. I don't think so. How about a mental resemblance to God? Oh, I can't think nearly on the planes that he could think about, but I certainly think that there are some things that he cares about us 
we should care about others. He cares about the environment. Maybe we should care about the environment a little more. What about our relationship in, in creation? Does that reflect, is that how we're made? He's given us dominion over, over, cre, over his creation. We're not lords over it, but he's given us dominion over it. We can't create it. How about our autonomy and our freedom? Hmm. That's kind of getting there, isn't it? We have free will. We can make some decisions. God has infinite wisdom. We have limited wisdom. <clears throat> if you took the time to read in the student book, you could read about these and the limitations of them. And I encourage you to do so. How does your status as slightly less than divine inform the way you live your life? Wow. Does that impact us? I certainly hope so. This month, our, med our emphasis is on meditation. And so as we run get caught up in the hustle and bustle of Christmas and, and all that goes with it. I encourage you to take some time this week to simply meditate. To take time to, not in a, in a Buddhist type of med meditation, but in a, set aside some time just to think about God coming as a man, living among us, and being born as a human. Wow, that's a pretty sobering thought, isn't it? Well, as we continue down the Advent, we'll look at it again. Let's close, to, let's close this lesson with the, with the prayer that's found on page 13 of our new student book. Praise and glory are yours, Creator God. Be patient with me. Work on me so I might reflect some glimmer of your image to the world. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. In the event that you need our assistance, please feel free to contact the, our, our church office or me personally, and we'll be glad to assist you any way we can. And I thank you for, for tuning and watching, and may God be with you this week.